Bifrost. On the right hand side is a gas simulation arrow that is called and on the left is a liquid simulation and uh, it looks totally differently when you render it. Bifrost with O umlaut, by frost actually, B frost or something like that, has two modes, liquid and arrow. And uh, liquid uses another kind of physical function than arrow. The basic difference is um, the equations for aerodynamics, for gases basically, is that they are compressible, whereas liquids are only marginally compressible. You can try to compress water but it's really hard or compress oil uh, whereas compressing a gas or expanding uh, a gas is quite easy. That's uh, by de definition. So the two systems here so close to each other in the Bifrost fluids menu in Maya um, are very very different from each other. So uh, what I'll do now is uh, I create a liquid and an arrow and we just compare the two of them in the attribute editor. That's basically all we do, but on the way there we'll create a colliders for each of them. Okay, um, well, let's start with a box which will serve as our um, ground. Right mouse click face, select the top face go to in polygon modeling here uh, or in this icon sh shelf here you can extrude this I extrude and uh, make it a little bit smaller and then I press the key G which means I repeat the last command uh, which means I extrude it again and I extrude it to the inside like this I don't need to, to see the grid anymore so this is what I have right mouse click object mode um, okay let's stick to a gray setting here. Now I duplicate this, Control D, and move it to the side and rotate it like this. It's going to be the ceiling for our gas. And this is going to be the container of our water. Okay, let's change the background color, Alt B. So we see a little bit more of uh, what's going on here. Now we need uh, emitters. Um, a very fancy thing to emit is really using text. For example, you can emit from an A. Let's do this. Um, instead of 3D type, let's type A. That's the letter A. That's going to be our emitter for A, for the for the fluid. Let's make it much smaller like this get closer to it and maybe rotate it like this make it a little bit bigger okay so this is going to be our liquid emitter um, we will uh, just with this uh, I can select it go to Bifrost fluids and create a liquid now a box surrounds that uh, A representing the liquid in Bifrost. Um, when you run the simulation now you barely see anything. The box w moves down and since it doesn't see this uh, the, the ground floor as a ground floor it just penetrates the floor and here are the little particles. Now we need to make them visible in a better way and uh, the easy way to do this is uh, when you're in the attribute editor here liquid shape you have a point size the point size is currently set to 1 just increase it to a higher um, value which gives you a better view of the thing it doesn't have to do anything with the rendering and we'll get to rendering in a second so let's rewind the simulation now um, we will now add this as a collider. So we select the box here, the, which is basically our bifrost liquid, and shift select the, um, the surface here, and under bifrost fluids we add it as a collider. Now the liquid from the A 
is colliding with that surface and we'll hide the A. We don't need to see it, we want to see the particles, we want to see the liquid. Uh, control H, it used to be, now it's only H, which is just fine. Here we have the A consisting of particles. Um, we'll introduce a light, create lights, a directional light, which points into the scene now. I rotate it a little bit like this, and I move it up so I don't see it. It's a parallel light source anyway. I need lots of more intensity from uh, my experience before. And now when I render it with Arnold, I get this kind of liquid representation of the A here at the very beginning of the simulation. When I run the simulation now, the A droplets fall to the ground and they expand. When I render it now, I have this quite beautiful liquid here, which doesn't have to do anything with the A anymore. But uh, this is just it's just served as our emitter. Um, I just want to point you to this beautiful liquid here, which we've created uh, within a few seconds. Actually, when you get closer to it, you will see that the liquid does not exactly sit on that surface. It keeps a safe distance from the surface and that has to do with something which we'll explore in a second now. We need to go to the Bifrost liquid properties here in the outliner. You have them here and here you have what is called a resolution. The resolution is a very very crucial value. It basically says the lower the value is, the smaller the simulated particles will be, the more detailed and precise the simulation will get. So when we reduce it from 0 0.5 to 0 0.1, the simulation will take much longer, but you won't have um, the problem that the uh, particles keep a distance from the collider surface. So let's simulate this and you see how slowly it goes now. Frame 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Maya has to do a lot of simulation work with a non-compressible surface here. And here you already have interesting effects which you did not see in the uh, master voxel size resolution of 0 0.5. So that's quite a difference now. And you see it's further down to the ground now. It's a quite a nice thing. So you would typically start with a higher ma master voxel size in order to get the simulation running at all. Let's set it to 1. Scene needs a while to update, really. And now this is only the representation here, but uh, there's very little to see of the A anymore. And uh, the simulation goes much faster frame 16, 20, 26, etc. And then you have the little dots uh, flowing on that floor, keeping a safe distance from the floor. When we render this, it looks quite different. It's like a clunky uh, object here. So the, this is about the final output here, the master voxel size, the very, very critical value here. Let's uh, move it back to 0 0.5, which is a good starting point. It has to do with the dimensions of the whole scene as well. Okay, uh, now let's go to a gas. And um, we'll create another sphere here. Uh, why did I say another sphere? We created an A before that. Actually, we should create an A. So let's delete this. Uh, or the letter B, for example. Let's create a B. Okay, here is the B. Um, move it over here. Um, rotate it like this and scale it down. So this is where our gas is evaporating from now. Um, or will be in a second. This object selected, Bifrost fluids, arrow. Okay. Um, now we can hide the B, H, and run the simulation. Now you see the shape of the B here, and instead of flowing down to the ground, it flows up. 
Here you have the same thing with the resolution, of course. Um, and you can make the particles a little bit better visible. So let's go to the Bifrost arrow here. And here you have the shape. And in the shape you have the point size, which does not affect the rendering, as I said before. So that's that B, which we've seen. Actually, since we're here already with a box selected and oops, uh, and the top, the ceiling selected, we create a collider. So the gas will collide with that surface now. Stop it here for a second. You see it keeps a safe distance as well. So that has to do with the voxel size again. And uh, the simulation is much more precise when you uh, reduce the voxel size, make the voxels smaller. Voxel is basically a pixel in 3D. So that's quite nice. Let's render this. You don't see much. This is the ceiling here, uh, and this is a grayish tone here, uh, which comes from our gas. So get a little bit further away, render it again. We need a background here uh, in order to make it visible better, but you can imagine that uh, it's a uh, it's, uh, gas and uh, we can change the shader, etc. Now, finally, I want to show you that um, the attributes are different of the two containers here. Let's go to the Bifrost liquid properties here. Uh, and we have the attribute editor here. And in order to compare things in detail, uh, you can copy the tab, this thing here. It's rarely used, but it's very useful, really. So that's our liquid tab, Bifrost liquid properties container, with a gravity, uh, gravity magnitude, etc. Let's compare this to the Bifrost arrow properties. We select it and we copy the tab. So we have on the right side, we have the arrow properties container and on the left side we have the liquid container. So both uh, simulations are enabled. You can disable them temporarily for example if you like. Um, you can change the gravity for each system here so both are the same gravity. They well make sense and the gravitation is pointing to down meaning minus one that's the y-axis and here you have the master voxel size that's the one we just talked about which keeps the distance which makes that um, the simulation much more interesting if you reduce this so for pre-simulation keep the value pretty high a value of 1 will give you a very crude simulation. A value of 0 0.1 will give you a quite a nice sexy simulation here. And here you see already little differences. The arrow um, attribute editor has a voxel size render factor. I don't know what it means, but it's different from here. So uh, that's the resolution section. Let's close the resolution section. So you have an additivity um, section here you have a spatial adaptivity um, for the liquid which is enabled by default and which deletes exceeding particles and here it's disabled by default. Um, I'm only pointing you to the differences here. So uh, transport is basically the same. We can close this. Uh, we have time stepping here which is basically the same as well but maximum time steps for the gas is much higher than uh, for the liquid. Let's close this. The kill volume, we have kill volumes for both of the simulations. Basically, uh, you use a mesh in order to tell the simulation beyond that plane or mesh. You don't need to simulate anything any anymore. Here you have an emission, which you don't have here. Here you have air with density. Here you have surface tension, vorticity, viscosity, which you don't have here. So uh, this section is much richer than this one for the gas. Um, so do compare the two of them if you're interested in creating aero systems or liquid systems. 
And keep in mind, you can copy the tabs so you have them side by side and can use them all right. Basically, that's all I wanted to tell you. I hope you get a good starting point with simulation of Bifrost.